Good morning students. I am Deepika. I have made this video for you all so that you can learn and understand the chapter in a different way. Here I am going to start with geography chapter 2 globes latitudes and longitudes. Did you know that there is a way for you to see the entire world at a glance? Surprise, right? Yes. with the help of a globe one can see the entire earth at a glance not just the different continents and oceans you can even see the different lines like latitudes and longitudes on the globe so let us find out more about globe latitudes and longitudes in the previous chapter you have learned about that a planet earth is not a sphere Long long ago people thought that it was flat like a coin but the actual shape of the earth is geoid which means it is slightly flattened at the north and the south pole and bulges in the middle you can resemble it through a shape of an orange to make the study of the earth easy and on small scale geographers discovered globes Globe is a miniature of the earth. It shows the shape and location of the continents and ocean. Different places can be located on a globe. Globes may be of varying size and types. There are big ones which cannot be carried easily and small pocket globes and globe like balloons which can be inflated and are handy carried with ease. the globe is not fixed it can be rotated the same way as a top spin or a potter wheel is rotated a globe is a true model of the earth in a very compact form in a globe there is a needle called the axis that is fixed through the globe in a tilted manner this axis of the globe passes through two extreme points known as the poles the north pole and the south pole the axis shown in the form of a needle on the globe in reality the earth has no such axis but it is tilted towards 23 and a half degree students like every coin has its two sides similarly globe is also having some advantages and some disadvantages associated with it now some advantages of the globe it shows exact shape of the earth spherical slightly flattened at the poles and bulging at the equator which is also known as geoid shape the shape of continents and oceans are shown accurately the different physical features are also marked more or less accurately now some disadvantages it is bulky and cannot be stored easily as it occupies a lot of space it cannot show the details of landforms and location of small towns as we can only locate india but not the states or the districts in it it can not provide detail information about climate vegetation agriculture etc although larger globes show some details as they are difficult to carry and handle an imaginary line running on the globe that divides it into two equal parts this line is known as the equator the northern half of the earth is known as the northern hemisphere and the southern half is known as the southern hemisphere the equator is an imaginary circular line and is very important reference point to locate places on the earth students as discussed in the previous slide the equator is the circle passing through the center of the earth it is perpendicular to the axis and goes on to divide the earth into two hemisphere the northern half as the northern hemisphere the southern half as the southern hemisphere 
there are a number of more circles parallel to the equator. These circles have their center on the axis and have different radii. Such circles are known as the parallels of latitudes. As you can see the images on the screen, there are the horizontal line that run in east to west directions are called latitudes. An interesting thing about the latitude is the east to west line gets shorter as you move away from the equator towards the pole. Each latitude is separated by one degree. One degree has 60 minutes. Generally, latitudes are measured in degree. All parallel circles from the equator up to the poles are called parallels of latitudes. The parallels are located at an equal distance from each other. Since the distance from the equator to either of the pole is one fourth of a circle round the earth, it will measure 360 degree as 90 degree. Thus, 90 degree north latitude marks the north pole and 90 degree south latitude marks the south pole. All parallels north of the equator are called north latitude. Similarly, all parallels south of the equator are called south latitude. The value of each latitude is followed by either the word N for north or S for south. For example, Chandrapur in Maharashtra and Belo Horizonte in Brazil are located on the parallels of about 20 degree latitude. But the former is north of the equator and the latter is south of it. That means Chandrapur is situated at 20 degree north latitude and Belo Horizonte is situated at 20 degree south latitude. As we move away from the equator, the size of the parallels of latitude decreases. Students, let's now understand the image presented over here. It depicts some important parallels of latitudes. Starting from the top, the 90 degree north is also known as the North Pole. 66.5 degree north is known as Arctic Circle. 23.5 degree north is known as Tropic of Cancer. Then the equator with 0 degree. In the southern hemisphere, the 23.5 degree south is known as Tropic of Capricorn. Students, you can identify that Africa is the only continent through which the Tropic of Cancer equator and Tropic of Capricorn passes through. Then the next is 66.5 degrees south known as Antarctic Circle and lastly 90 degrees south as South Pole. The heat zones of the earth. Students as you can see in the picture that the sun rays falling on the equator are more directly as compared to the sun rays falling on the poles are slanting in nature. Therefore, the equator receives the maximum amount of heat as compared to the poles, whereas the medium amount of heat is received on the 30 degree north and south of latitudes. This picture depicts why the heat zones of the earth are different in nature. Let's do heat zones of the earth more in detail. The midday sun is exactly overhead at least once a year on all latitudes in between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. This area receives the maximum heat and is called the torrid zone. The next, 
the midday sun never shines overhead on any latitude beyond the tropic of cancer and the tropic of capricorn the angle of the sun rays goes on decreasing towards the pole the areas bounded by the tropic of cancer and the arctic circle in the northern hemisphere and the tropic of capricorn and the antarctic circle in the southern hemisphere have moderate temperatures therefore these are known as temperate zone areas lying between the arctic circle and the north pole in the northern hemisphere and the antarctic circle and the south pole in the southern hemisphere are very cold it is because here the sun does not rise much above the horizon its rays are always slanting provide very less amount of heat therefore it is also called the frigid zone